Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. What is the Friendship Ambassadors Foundation? What is the foundation doing to work with youth, primarily through cultural activities, to promote world peace, as well as to confront problems such as climate change, illiteracy, and poverty? We'll be back in just a moment to talk about these and other important issues. Welcome back to our program. Today we're taking a look at a very unique organization that's working with youth all around the world, primarily through cultural activities, to focus on major problems that affect literally all the people on planet Earth, such as climate change and others too. Today we have a very uh, knowledgeable person that's going to talk about the foundation. My guest today is Mr. Patrick Shirada. Patrick Shirada has been the executive director of the Friendship Ambassadors Foundation since 1993. Under his leadership, the Friendship Ambassadors Foundation has helped create and produce the annual Youth Assembly at the United Nations, now in its sixth year, the Youth Band for the United Nations, and a series of internationally recognized cultural exchange programs both at home and around the world. Patrick Sherrata, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Bill, it's so good to see you and be with you once again. And I say once again because I hear you say it's in our sixth year, and I remember the last time we did this work, and we were in our sixth year, we're now in our twelfth year, so we haven't seen each other in quite it's a while. way too long. And it is really great <laughs> to catch up with you. Thank, Thank you, you I appreciate so much it. for the time. Well, we're going to jump into some of your cultural activities, but what, very briefly, what is the Friendship Ambassadors Foundation? When was it formed? Why was it formed? It was formed in 1973, actually, by some of the leaders uh, of Reader's Digest, two of the editors of Reader's Digest, Howard Morgan and Cappy Devlin, uh, when they were editors, uh, formed it, and some of the initial funding came from Lila and DeWitt Wallace, uh, the founders of Reader's Digest. The idea was that if we could understand other cultures, I think very similar to UNAOC, the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, mm -hmm. that if we could clear the cultural brush, we'd be better suited for policy decisions because we'd better understand uh, other folks. And so we looked at music and dance and theater, uh, painting, arts, as the way into that understanding of the other culture since our inception. Mm -hmm. That was a perfect segue right in. You said music, and you have been involved in a very unique project with, what, five ambassadors from the United Nations. Tell us a bit about that project of the Singing Ambassadors. So the Singing Ambassadors are uh, five UN permanent representatives, permanent representatives to the UN, led by Ambassador Simona Michalescu of Romania, uh, and the other ambassadors from uh, Nauru, from uh, Cap Verde, uh, from um, Canada, Canada and uh, from Costa Rica uh, formed the this tight group, this interesting knit group of uh, PRs who are very interested in utilizing the arts as a means of bringing the world together. So the songs that were selected were all kind of standard songs of peace throughout the world. There's there's one from Bob Dylan and Michael ja and, and uh, Michael Jackson and uh, I know that uh, John Lennon and others and we've actually uh, written and commissioned a song called uh, The Rhythms of One World, and that is sung with the ambassadors and a large group of school children. And it's really a delightful album, and it's a wonderful opportunity to use music to reach out across uh, cultural borders. Mm -hmm. Now, if our viewers would like, could they go to your website, PS Global FAF? No, FAF.org. FAF.org. Yes. They could go to that. Okay. And they'd be able to uh, find in uh, current projects, they would see the CD, but you know, everyone is so hip these days, they'll be on iTunes and Amazon and it's there as well. Um, so it is on sale and they will see uh, this wonderful uh, CD and then bring it home and hear it and they'll be delighted. Exactly right. Well, it's, certainly it sounds like something that everybody should listen to more than once and really 
pay attention to the lyrics and really listen to them because we need people to talk about promoting world peace. We need to look at these problems and to be involved in them. Well, let's go back to talk about the Youth Assembly. There's a term, I know you're involved with the Youth Assembly. What exactly is the Youth Assembly at the United Nations? So just to bring you up to speed, just very quickly, we'll probably go over this in, in, uh, in other details, but the cultural exchanges led to an opportunity for young people to wish to speak about uh, how we now can proceed as youth, these are mostly um, youth-oriented exchanges, uh, how they might move to the next step and really discuss policy. So there are so many policy fronts to work on that when in the year 2002 we began to get many of our young singers growing up into professions, Simona Michalescu, Her Excellency, began with us singing in high school. Uh, and, and many others who we may discuss, um, they said, what kinds of things can we do next? So it was apparent that the Millennium Development Goals would be a great key to unlocking their interest and their ability as youth leaders. So every year since our inception with the Youth in Assembly, which was 2002, uh, and now we do it twice a year, we focus on aspects of the Millennium Development Goals. They're very accessible. These are targets that um, have enabled us to say that this is probably one of the best development efforts the world has ever undertaken. And now we're at this place where we're moving away from the MDGs and towards the SDGs and the post-2015 agenda. And the bottom line, as this is a real youth assembly and very well attended, is if the post-2015 agenda is not for youth, mm -hmm. who is it for? You know, and so th there's Ex been a lot of excitement about it. Exactly. And you mentioned the MDGs. The Millennium Development Goals were adopted in 2000, 2000 by the majority of the countries at the United Nations. And there are eight logical goals to reduce abject poverty, to pr promote universal primary school education, to empower women, to reduce infant mortality rates, improve maternal mortality rates, to reverse the AIDS pandemic, to promote sustainable development, and to promote international cooperation and partnerships. Those are eight very comprehensive goals. Do you find that the students focus on all of them, or do they pick certain ones that they really try to emphasize, or does it vary from group to group you know, to group? It, we really could even work backwards. I think that the primary goal, mission, vision of Friendship Ambassadors is MDG number eight. We're really looking to unite the world through arts and culture. So many of them come to us because they were either in a, a, a relationship where a developed country and a least developed country were sharing some music or dance in country and have wanted to work together. However, many of them come with their own aspirations. And these are genuine youth leaders who come to us with phenomenal ideas, some in practice. And uh, we've been working with uh, people from the Model UN who have grown up to work now with the Resolution Project, which we'll probably talk about a little bit later, that are helping to support these young people to take their ideas further. This is not a kumbaya session. Fr uh, Friendship Ambassadors created the youth assembly as a practical skills development gathering and networking session for the young people involved. Mm -hmm. How do you get young people involved? Can they go to your website, faf.org, and get more information? Yes, or they can. can and they many of them go to another site, which is actually Youth Assembly at the UN, A-T, not the at it's sign. Spelled out. Yes, spelled all the way out, Youth Assembly at, at the, the UN. UN. org, okay. And that also has a good deal of information <laughs> and how they can register either individually or more and more now people are registering as groups mm -hmm. because they're coming from afar. And it is great to come with your community, whether that community is 20 lawyers who came last year, young lawyers uh, from Russia, or 300 young Chinese who came last mm -hmm. time. Uh, and there are groups and pockets from around the world. Nigeria will be sending 80 this summer, for example. So individuals come, groups come, and we're very proud of that. Mm -hmm. Now, who have been some of the speakers that you've had in the past? I know this will change, obviously, in the future. You may not have the same speakers back, but who were some of the prominent personalities who were on the program, and well, what were the messages that they delivered to the young people? Maybe we can start with the one who, uh, last time he spoke in the winter in February, he said, you know, I have frequent flyer miles here at the Youth <laughs> Assembly, and that is Ahmed Al-Hendawi. Ah, the envoy yes. for youth came mm -hmm. to the Youth Assembly, and his first real contact with the United Nations in New York was in, I believe it was 2008, 
when I wound up uh, picking him up and bringing him to a pre-YA program that we were doing, and then he came to the YA to the Youth Assembly, then and returned again as a speaker, and then when the Arab Spring began to occur, he was working at the Ar uh, for the Arab Union um, in Cairo and worked with us to recognize leaders from the, uh, uh, from the youth movement within the Arab Spring, and then came back again and again, and we're so proud to have him still. Exactly, and he is the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's first appointee, first appointment, as his youth envoy to reach yes. out to the youth around the world. In fact, he was just on our show about a month ago, or two months ago, I guess it has been. But it's very, a phenomenal, very bright guy, very wise, good. He certainly wonderful is, yes. guy. Well, who were some of the other? Oh, you've had well, some I, of our other guests, too. Jane Goodall, Dr. Goodall. Jane Goodall, Goodall been on. Uh, just was with us last summer, and she brought the film Chimpanzee with her, which we showed in its entirety during one of the lunch breaks. Uh, we also just premiered uh, another new movie, which just opened this week. It's an IFC independent film, but it opened here in New York called Dancing in Jaffa. And we had the lead actors, the director and the producer, Pierre Dulane, wonderful, wonderful film. Um, we've had Jesse Jackson, we've had, um, uh, uh, I guess going down the line, uh, Angelique Cujo stands out in my mind because Angelique created, if you may recall, a song called Eight Goals for Africa, which is a tremendous, wonderful, piece of rock music that could be an anthem for the UN if perhaps it wasn't only focused on um, on Africa, but a wonderful song. And she's come and spoken about how musicians can uh, make uh, music uh, that's valued. And we hope to have her back again this summer because she's come out with a new CD based on uh, women's rights and women's empowerment. So there are, there are many, uh, and many more that I could name. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is an independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guests. Today, we're taking a look at a very interesting organization that's working with youth around the world, primarily through cultural activities, to focus on how to promote world peace, as well as deal with problems such as sustainable development, illiteracy, and poverty. My guest today is an expert on this group. My guest today is Mr. Patrick Sherrata. Patrick Sherrata is the executive director of the Friendship Ambassadors Foundation. Patrick, you were going, right before we had the break, you were talking about some of the outstanding people you've had on the program. Who are a few more? I know we could we could spend two hours or more on them, but do one or two or three sure. more pop and into we've mind? Had, well, we've had many of the uh, ambassadors to the UN. Um, we, uh, we've had uh, Susan Rice uh, speak recently, uh, right before she left, and uh, the day Samantha Powers was named, uh, we actually had a request from her to bring about 100 of our youth over to the U.S. mission. So sometimes we've actually come out uh, uh, of the U.N. during the process to go to various missions. So many of the uh, uh, many of the ambassadors uh, themselves. We've had several uh, several uh, uh, gold medal winners from the Olympics. Uh, Johan Koss uh, comes to mind in particular, uh, and his Right to Play, which is a wonderful NGO uh, that he runs, and uh, the head of Engineers Without Borders. Um, so we've had many people who have been working on the ground uh, in particular uh, issue areas who have come to speak ab uh, about their work or to to encourage the young people. Sometimes we are trying to, with the younger people, really encourage them to go further as youth leaders. And uh, often we uh, have young professionals in the winter who are working with programs that are already existing, and they help to mentor some of the younger folks. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier you mentioned the Model United Nations program. And I know many of the viewers watching this show have participated in Model UN programs, which I think Model, uh, Model UN developed about 1919, about the time of the League of Nations. And today, the latest figure I saw, there are about 150,000 people in the U.S. and literally hundreds of thousands around the world participating each year in a Model UN program. How does your program differ from the Model UN program? Or do well, you interact with it? No, as many of your viewers will note, the Model UN is a kind of replication of the United Nations, where I might, as a high school or university student, play uh, a role as an ambassador from a certain country and work within units with certain policy issues. And this is really wonderful for giving people an understanding of what sometimes may 
seem very opaque. Uh, what does the UN do? Our work is very different. We come here as members of uh, the NGOs who are associated with the United Nations Department of Public Information. So we feel it's our job to give public information as to what the UN is doing and stands for, and then have reports from the field, what young people are doing. So this is more hands-on, it's more related to the stated missions of the UN rather than replicating the work of the UN. So the Millennium Development Goals, and we've had tremendous youth doing incredible work from uh, various parts of the world uh, who have come to report on those. And uh, mm -hmm. they've been very excited. I wish we had time, I could go into them. They're much more uh, interesting, I think, than even some of the speakers we've we'll, had. We'll squeeze more in, <laughs> I'm right. sure. Right. And so your program, really, you, you're a hands-on program. The other is more of a structure organizational approach, process approach yes. to some degree. But let's talk a little bit about uh, practically what are you folks, you're working to reduce abject poverty, you're working to reduce illiteracy. Are there various projects that you can identify that are going on right now that are really making a difference in the lives of the people with whom they're working? One of the great things about the Youth Assembly is that it has spawned an alumni organization which is about 5,000 strong and exists in about 30 countries right now and we have 18 large active projects working called uh, in a program called the International Youth Council. What we felt was that as, as associates of DPI, it really wasn't incumbent upon mm -hmm. us to demand that people go out and change policies, do work, but we wanted to create the platform mm -hmm. upon which those could happen. And this active, active alumni organization is out there doing that kind of work, working currently in Tacloban, um, in the Philippines on some of the reclamation issues. I've been um, very interested in looking at replanting and planting mangrove uh, to be able to assist in that area. Mm -hmm. We actually have been working with Ilak Diaz a number of years ago, a youth from the Philippines again who is working on reclamation of plastic and other bottles which often cause uh, these clogs that lead to those horrible uh, floods that occur often during the rainy season uh, in and outside of Manila. Uh, we have young people, uh, a young girl, 16 years old, working in Pakistan, Kirkishan, who has been uh, recognized by the UN. She is going to be going to the uh, UN World Youth uh, Conference, which maybe Ahmed may have mentioned, coming <laughs> up in Sri Lanka next week. And uh, the UN is actually sponsoring her to go as a youth. So we're very proud of even our youngest youth doing work on the ground in several countries right now that are dealing with poverty, that are dealing with illiteracy, that are dealing with education, that are dealing with women's issues and health, and are dealing um, also with sustainability. There was, you and I had talked earlier, and you mentioned a program, a project, Humanacy. This is a new word to me. Uh, it, it will certainly be in the vocabulary very shortly, I'm sure. What exactly is humanity? When was it, what does it do? And what, when was it started, really? Well, with many of our programs, we've used music to bring forth the idea that if we knew each other better on these creative cultural terms, we would be able to address each other without the kind of fear of the other. So we have the rhythms of one world, our concert tours, the youth assembly. But humanity gives us the opportunity to really look at the humanities and diplomacy, or what you might call cultural diplomacy. It is led by the, um, uh, the ambassador of the mission of Sao Tome and Principe, um, uh, Ambassador Torriello, and Ambassador Torriello coined the phrase and uh, is an artistic person himself, very similar to Ambassador Michalescu. And uh, he felt that we should really look at this issue of the interaction and interplay of the humanities and the arts and diplomacy so that we understood some of where our brothers and sisters from the rest of the world, who sometimes are misunderstood and often feared, can be better understood. And so Humanacy was presented at the Dag Hammarskjöld Auditorium very successfully three weeks ago. And it brought together speakers. Ambassador Michalescu was there talking about the CD, a perfect example. Uh, we also had the um, 
uh, the New York-based Big Apple Circus because they do work called the Clown Care Unit where they work with children who have uh, terminal illnesses. And they're now in 52 cities around the world. And there were many other opportunities to look at uh, how the arts and the humanities, uh, the, the humanities are dealing with diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this CD, the Singing Ambassadors, really was a remarkable idea. And they have wonderful voices, and they have tremendous messages through the various songs that you're singing, but it's really outstanding. What would you like to do in the future? I know you're, you're very well, creative, and you're going to come up with a lot of new ideas. Well, you had mentioned, you know, this being a great idea, the CD. But the CD is a future. It, it is an outgrowth of the Rhythms of One World, which is a large concert festival series that we do. It happens in June each year. And what we do in, on, uh, at the end of June is bring together hundreds of singers, youth singers from around the world, to sing in support of the UN. Now, why then? because on June 26, 1945, was the signing of We the Peoples. Now, on October 24th, everyone else in the world celebrates UN Day because that's when, the, uh, when it was ratified. Right. Uh, we consider that more like the baptism of fire. You know, it had to be ratified. But certainly June 26, when it was signed, is the birth. And we have always wanted to celebrate the birth rather than the baptism. So we had hundreds of young people sing in the G. Hall in 2012, also at Lincoln Center, Avery mm -hmm. Fisher. It was live webcast throughout the world. The ambassador sang, and out of that came the, um, the, the CD. Now, uh, July 3rd through the 8th, we will be presenting mm -hmm. the Rhythms of One World once again, but as the GA Hall is closed, the General Assembly Hall here, we'll be presenting it in Geneva at the Palais des Nations and at Victoria Hall with a great deal of support from the UN and we hope to be able to have some of the UN ambassadors singing there and next summer, next June, with the General Assembly Hall open again, we'll be bringing it back to New York. That's a big program for us, the Youth Assembly, the Rhythms of One World, uh, the various outgrowths of those, um, and also our work in, uh, in the developing world. We just finished building a building in uh, Ecuador uh, for the uh, Shuar, uh, indigenous Shuar people, and we've been working in Equatorial Aqu uh, uh, Ecuador rather, uh, on a number of projects uh, there. So we've moved from the arts to coming together, to talking about issues, to actually going out into the field mm -hmm. together, and through the International Youth Council and our other youth delegates working in the field. Mm -hmm. And earlier we talked about the Millennium Development Goals and how important they were to have eight logical goals so that the, the, really the countries of the world, the non-governmental organizations, faith-based groups, service clubs such as Rotary, Lions, Kiwanis, different groups like that could focus on them. The continuum was to run from 2000 to 2015, but at the end of that you alluded to the Sustainable Development Goals. What would you like to see come out of that to continue to build upon the foundation of the accomplishments of the Millennium Development Goals and in areas maybe where there weren't as many as people would like to, to improve them into the future? Well, the Sustainable Development Goals were actually crafted uh, initially by the NGO community and has now moved to the Open Working Group and the World We Want and a number of different iterations and certainly the member states now are deciding on the final path of the post-2015 agenda. But that began during the Bonn UN DPI conference in 2011, led by Felix Dodds mm -hmm. and uh, Richard Jordan, Jeffrey Huffines, and others, who really helped to craft the original document that was presented to the General Assembly. Then in Rio Plus 20, it was developed further. And you're right, now we're moving from these very neatly defined eight goals to 17, maybe 20. Uh, they will focus more on sustainable development. I, I have a, a colleague um, that I work with in the NGO community who has mentioned other sustainable ideas, which is sustaining what we have already accomplished in the Millennium Development Goal, so it's sort of redefining it rather than looking at sustainability. And I think all of these issues play into the hopes and dreams of the youth of the future. We may see them as difficult issues. I was at a meeting recently where someone, uh, an older person, said to one of the younger people who we're working with, well, how are you going to deal with all of these ills and all of these woes? Mm -hmm. And she said, 
I don't see them that way. She said, if you had solved everything, think how boring life would be. This is my generation, and this is what's before me. So whether it's 17 or it comes out to be 20 goals, whether those goals are somewhat different or build upon the MDGs, I think the excitement for the youth that I've seen, especially led by Ahmed and, and others, really excites me for the possibilities that they will be successful in realizing even more success than we achieved during the MDGs. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to focus on young people because they, it's <laughs> the cliche goes, they're the, they are the future. They are go they're going to make or break this world and they all have a role to play in dealing with these problems. And when we look at these problems, we might see poverty or illiteracy in certain areas and pockets and maybe worse in some countries than others. But we look at climate change, that affects everybody. We all will suffer from climate change, and we need to focus on it today because if we don't, it will certainly be much more exp exp expensive and devastating to deal with it tomorrow. But it's good that you, Patrick Sharada, are mobilizing the youth and doing it through a variety of very in innovative programs. But I want to thank you so very thank much you. for a very interesting and a very Always informative great program. Always to see you. Good Always to see you. wonderful. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us on today's Global Connections program.